Hey, Angela, Connor and Angela Impact Adventures. I'm not gonna lie. I am so stoked about tonight. I gotta turn this uh, camera around and show you why. This is what we're doing tonight. Connor and my good buddy Brad has built a uh, bug out vehicle. This is good buddy Don came over. And this bad boy, they're going to show me what they did, why they did it. <laughs> and I am really stoked about learning. That looks good. Hey guys, I am so stoked about this tonight. Our prepper series continues with bug out vehicles. Two bozos. Two bozos. No, these are smart bozos. And this guy... Brad, I can't wait to introduce him and his buddy Don. Brad's one of those guys that's good at anything he does. Anything. Ask what you want to ask. Ah. You can even ask about the Alabama. No, I'm oh, so I got to zoom in for the Alabama. Well, we only. shouldn't have that on video. Should oh, like, yes, we just got that. <laughs> Alabama. Half the enemies already. Oh, <laughs> awesome. Turn them off. We're a UT fan. Yeah, this is starting out really good. <laughs> we are in Tennessee. Okay, seriously, um, Brad agreed to uh, do a video for Connor and I. My dad owns Amco Transmissions. I was actually raised a gearhead. You probably don't know that about me. I'm the only girl with all brothers. So this really interests me. As much as I love the outdoors, I raced snowmobiles, motorcycles, go-karts growing up. My mom just took... I know, I was never behind the camera, and here I am. Um, but I'm excited to be behind the camera for this. The uh, series tonight is on a bug-out vehicle. Really quick, yep. Brad is a friend of Connor's and mine. Don is a friend of Brad's, becoming a new friend of mine. I met him a few weeks ago on a... Um, Medical deal That's we're right, doing. Yeah, we're yep. stuff Give my audience, which is kind of newbies to prepping, why would you possibly need a bug out vehicle? Give me the 101. Bug out 101 in 60 seconds. Is that possible? 60 seconds? I don't care. We'll, we'll okay. add it to it. There's really five criteria. You okay. want to have something that, if you have an EMP event, it's going to run. You want to have something that's easy to get parts for. It also has payload capacity. You can get your family in. You can get your tools in. You can get your food in, your preps in. You can't do that in a really, really small car. You can't do it on a motorcycle. Um, and the and we actually had five criteria in one of the videos that we did. So if they want to go look at that, that's something. Very cool. I will had, post that underneath. You bet. Cool. Um, but we settled on a Chevy Suburban that has a 350 in it. They've been making a 350 since 1955. Thank you. The motor, as far as we're talking about the motor, the parts are real plentiful. Uh, they're cheap, very easy to work on. Yep. Uh, Even I can work on it, and I don't really just work on cars. <laughs> it, I mean, it is. It, it's uh, The parts are just unreal. You can get them anywhere, parts stores, junkyards, in case anything goes bad. You really can. They've been putting this in multiple different vehicles for, the, since, like you said, 54? 55. 1955. So forever so there are, there's some criteria that we thought of also you we, we put gun racks in here we did make it sweet EMP proof sweet i can't um, wait to take a look at that blackout night driving so it's something that you can drive at night wow. with all the lights off it's got infrared cameras on it oh this is an old vehicle it's got a couple couple cool uh, features to it so i know i ran through that quickly good job thanks um so amco transmission the big thing that my dad and brothers fight with is the computers Oh, it's been a nightmare for the transmission business. It's computers, right. computers, yeah. computers. Um, from a layman's term, I understand part of the reason why bug out vehicles are so effective is you get us away from that. That's why you're using older vehicles. Partially. To, partially. Tell me a little bit about the, the computer system or lack of. Am I thinking right? Is that what? No, it's, it's a good. It's a good thought process. Well, and that's why the EMP device is on here. We got it from the EMP shield. It's supposed to help protect batteries and some of the electronics. Now, listen, you're going to have some military guys are going to get on here and say all kind of. I mean, sure. you see some of the comments. You guys are idiots. That really won't protect it. It's the only device we know of that is endorsed by not only the Department of Homeland Security but the military. Wow. Whether or not it really will be EMP proof, I guess we got to have a new kit to find out. So, I'm not looking forward to that happening. If it happens. Right. But you really got to go pre 1980. Four. Yeah, somewhere along in there before they got real heavy in the computers. But that's one of the reasons we put that system on this thing is to protect it. Right. You know, and as far as we know, military, they endorse it, you know, so that's good enough for us. Right. Yeah. And I mean, really, the chances are 
what are the chances of really having an EMP event or a Carrington event like a lot of people talk about? And a Carrington event is the solar flare from the sun. They had one back in 18-something that fried our telegra tele telegraph system. It burned, melted the wires. And the likelihood of that happening is, is probably not all that great, but it could. And is yeah. this going uh, to protect us from that? I really honestly can't tell you, but we took the precaution that we could take to do it. And part of taking this vehicle, like you said, because all the parts you can get, is putting an all-terrain vehicle with all the extras you guys, and I can't wait to get into it to see, on this, you keep the monies, I don't know what, 30, 40, versus 100. You could probably get up a quarter million if you want to spend so the money on a brand make, new vehicle and yeah, yeah. they make bug out and who's got that bug out deals. they're a quarter of a million dollars yeah and one of the things that you and i discussed was we want to make something that the everyday guy could afford yeah that makes sense big yeah, time i mean we wanted to stay in a certain market budget with it i mean we did go from bumper to bumper made the bumpers on this thing yeah and and just try to keep it in a a good market to where somebody if they you know, wanted a hunting vehicle, a bug out vehicle. I mean, this is this thing could go anywhere. It really it's, will. It awesome. really will. And it's got some neat features to it. Where are we starting? Let's dig so, in. Well, um, <laughs> I, you know, I can do something simple. So you got a rack on top. Uh, it is not a true safari rack. It'll sell over 250 pounds. Um, we put some nets on the doors and back uh, through some extra cargo space. But the cool stuff, it might be a little bit hard to see with the camera. Everything overhead is a full metal rack going all the way down the center of the vehicle. As you can see that there is a, a gun rack up top, and then there's adjustable net in the middle, like a cargo net as yep. well. Yeah, I actually can. I can see it hanging down. Yeah, that's a good point there, Don. Thank you. There we go. So, we did LED lighting. We check, we'll check out all the old light, lighting. But yeah, we took oh, out there you all go. the old lighting. Um, so you've so got this is the top of this gun rack up there. Yeah, kind of cool. Wow. You can hang on that. It's not coming off. Right. So worst case scenario, I'm grabbing a workout in here. <laughs> you, can... <laughs> yeah, you get a workout in there. Nice. Sure. Cool, cool. Don, do you have a gun on you? Actually, just walk on the other side. That's a silly question. When the patron state of shooting stuff. <laughs> All Texas carry a gun. I don't know that. <laughs> Boo -boo. So we got the doggies out here. So we got a double video going on. This is your youngest son. You want to introduce yourself real quick? My name is Rylan. And he's awesome. And I'm videoing you videoing. How do you feel about that? And you're videoing me videoing you videoing. Okay. <laughs> so every door's got a uh ah oh, check that out. It's a magnetic gun gun holder. Good. Little holster. So there's, there's one That's on every disgusting. single door. And then every, or the two front seats have Molly connectors. Those are really tactical seat covers. Yeah, Connor loves all his backpacks. I have that. Sweet. But all the doors Oops, have them. There, I'm you know, sorry. I'm sorry, boo. There's one on every, there's a gun thing on every single door. You don't want your gun back, do you? Yeah, don't. I do. <laughs> <laughs> that might come in handy. Tell me the year of this again. You already said so it. So this is a 91. 91 Chevy. Suburban. Yes, and it's got on the engine and drive train on have about five hundred miles on it. And so you know, if somebody went out and bought a brand new full size suburban like this, they're ninety thousand oh, dollars. I know, deuce. And uh this one literally has a brand new engine, a brand new transmission. Uh w you know, we've got it listed on, on eBay right now. Um Do you mind me asking for what? Twenty three twenty three five, I think, something like that. Uh, you can do this. You could do this yourself for probably, I don't know. Gosh, we got twelve hundred dollars just to paint on it, don't we? Yeah, we um, got a lot of money in just <laughs> the paint and the bumpers. I I hand made the back bumper. Uh, we've done the front one there. We had to do a lot of modifications because it's got a uh, winch on it on the outside. Yeah, the there. worn winch is on there. The twelve hundred plus dollar winch. Yeah. So um, tell me, when did you get the idea to make this? We watched some. Brad, you like a couple foot close in so I can get sorry, you yeah. No, you're good. Just a second. We watched some other videos that some guys put up, and it wasn't complete. There was always something missing on every vehicle. You can do something a lot better than this for a vehicle, but they are, they're a quarter of a million dollars. Yeah, then there's where you, you come into where we first started shooting this thing, you know, and, and building it. You're getting in a, you can spend tons of money, you know, and we wanted to keep it to where. 
you know, somebody that likes to have a tactical vehicle slash hunting vehicle to go do stuff in, you know, keep it at a, a reasonable price. Yeah. yeah. Because, come on, it's, it is their second or third vehicle, depending on what they've got in the house. Guessing, how long would it take you if you had... If it was our full-time job and we yeah. just sat down and worked all the way through... I can't see the dog. Uh, what, Don, three months? What are you doing, boo? Yeah, it'd be three to four months. Three to four that, months, I mean, hardcore, putting, if you had yeah, 20 plus putting, hours a week to put into yeah, our day. You'd put some week, serious that's hours. Well, and, and I, the reason, only reason to take that long is because, you know, you're really, like, it's a brand new engine. So, this is a pulled engine, brand new engine in. Rebuilt transmission, completely pulled and, and a, a, a remanned transmission put in. Uh, all those things, you, then you stop and wait. All those things take a lot of time. Yeah, and, and, and going through everything to make sure, you know, it's dependable, reliable. I yeah. mean, that's the key. You know, it, it looks good sitting out in the yard, but it's it ain't run no good if it don't run. And, and yeah. you know, you got a pile in it and you got to bug out somewhere. Yeah. It's got to be dependable. You, a little secret about so, the transmission business. People yeah. don't want to know the truth. One in four transmissions come back. Yeah. Is yeah. it really? 25%. Wow. Mm -hmm. well, I don't know about the transmission business. Yeah, and so. Uh, yeah, I built it. So we have another bug out vehicle. Or is it the opposite? Once one out of four stay out. <laughs> I forget. I saw with Amco, you know, they make it right because you got the 12 months uh, warranty. But yeah, it's not a not a fun. Yeah, yeah. We've and we've driven this one enough that it's we know it's, yeah. it's solid. But you know, it, it's it's like the, you say the hours, like the bumper. You know, the, like the back bumper. I, I have, have that. And you know, it don't look real elaborate. But to, you know, to make everything, I mean, it is extreme. You know, back you can over back over a tree and not worry about it. But, you know, getting everything lined up and cutting pieces, you know, it takes, is a fabricator, that's what I am. I mean, it takes a lot of time for this, you know. And people don't take that in consideration. You asked about hours. I'll bet you've got 60 hours just in the front. front. Well, because I work on it a lot yeah. with you on the front bumper. Probably, yeah. I bet we got 60 hours just in the bumper. And the reason being is because a lot of your vehicles, the winch is up under the bumper, and we didn't have that luxury, so we had to make a whole. I had to make a whole new bracket, brace it from the backside and everything, and put that winch on the outside. Mm -hmm. So that was a major. Undertaking. If a businessman saw this video and he did not have the time, but he had the finances and he had a vehicle, would you entertain the idea of talking to someone? Building them a vehicle. <laughs> you don't have to say yes. I'm just asking the question. Uh, I've got two in the shop now. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, so maybe come purchase one of those. Oh my goodness, he loves you. <laughs> come on, stay down. Um, we got one out back that is. I've ordered to read on the transmission. It's mine. Um, I haven't had it. I haven't had a chance to do my own. <laughs> I mean, you and I both got our own stuff going on. This is yeah. So we got this one and three others total because you got that one and you got two in your shop. So they can call and make an offer on one of those. <laughs> they can buy this one. They can buy this one. I think one. this is uh, a amazingly Conrad. priced. I'm about ready to talk to Conrad. You know, you can throw your guns in there and everything and go. <laughs> I think you just heard Donnie say you can throw your guns in there and go. How smart is it to turn a uh, dirt bike into a... Uh, they don't put computers on those, do they? Yeah. They, they do. do. Well... Yeah, most of the new ones have some type, at least an electronic ignition on a lot of them. Yeah. I got the idea because I saw the uh, guy and a girl flying in front of me on a, two dirt bikes that they had crossed over into street legal. But they're, you know, doesn't take too much. You just got to be able to, um, but I thought, now, that's not a bad idea. On road, off road. And you can't carry very much. You got to be able to, well, you're basically packing out what you can carry in your backpack. Here's the short answer. If you're going to use dirt bikes to bug out somewhere... You better have a toy hauler to go behind something like this to put your dirt bikes on. Because if if we have an event where we have a meltdown, you realize how exposed you are driving a motorcycle down the road. You're so exposed. Now, if you got a toy hauler to get your bikes to where your trail is to get to your cabin, that's yeah. completely different. But there's a lot of great books. There's a series called 299 Days. There's another series called Going Home. Um, Finding Home, uh, written by A. American, I think, A. American. 
Um, it really it talks about what happens to the open road when society melts down. You can down. have that. I don't care at all. Sorry. The dog <laughs> well, stole my water. Time, right? If you don't mind, but <laughs> I, I want to grab this so he doesn't make that a chew yeah. toy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll let the dog stay entertained with the water. There we go. Is that good? That's this, really uh, fun, right? Brad's keeping this dog for a week. <laughs> Pastor, for Pastor's going to get the dog back sooner, I think. Um, yeah, we... Dirt bikes are great, but not for leaving any type of a metropolitan suburban sure. area. It's you're you're really exposing yourself to everything. People are looking for them, and I got gotcha. you. Yeah. So talk to me a little bit. I might use this or not use it. Uh, would you guys consider yourself preppers? Well, you know, Proverbs in the Bible says, "Consider the ant who stores up in the summer for the winter." I think it's a biblical principle that we're all supposed to prepare. Boom. Am I going to go, like, dig a hole and, and, like, have an underground bunker like some people that I really... Sorry if you do that. I think you're a little whacked out. <laughs> uh, but I'm, we're supposed to prepare. Yeah. My thing is, people, you know, they say, are you a prepper? And I'm like, I take care of my family. Yeah. I, and whatever that takes to take care of my family... Is what I am. Agree. I am new to this completely, and uh, I did a, the video on the nutrition part because I did uh, see what the preppers are doing for food, etc. And so I just did my and in learning of what people are doing, it just made sense to me to take it back to what we were doing not too long ago. Everybody prepared. They had pantries of six months to five years of food Root cellars that they, they ate can, from. You yeah. eat from the front of your pantry, you rebuild yeah. the back of your pantry. It's not rocket science. No. It, so that's what I started. It just happened this year. You went to stores. Couldn't wipe your tail. And we didn't have any Which food on is the whole shelf. Story. We like a third world country. And we're fighting over it. Matter yeah. of fact, we're ready to pull guns all over toilet paper. Yeah. Which, and, and then I had some friends of mine that says, man, all I got in my house is a can of biscuits and a couple of packets of kool-aid what do you got and i'm like well and here's here's an easy way to answer the department of homeland security tells every american you need to have at a minimum 72 hours of food and water in your house that's what they say a minimum of 72 hours that's the department of homeland security okay if you really think about think about katrina think what happened up in long island new york right. uh five years ago when the hurricane came through Panama City, Florida was destroyed in October of 2018, and people were without power for months down there. Um, that kind of stuff really is not all that unheard of. Yeah. Although it happens in isolated areas, it happens. Yeah. Well, and it's happening more and more abundant now. Agreed. You know, And people used to laugh at us because we were doing some storage and prepping and stuff. Now we don't look so stupid as they right. used to call us. You know, they're like... Oh, you're feeding your family, and I'm sitting over here eating a pack of cookies. Right. Yeah. So the point is not for us to be the only ones prepared. The point is to get the word out so that other people will take, and everybody can get prepared. So we're not, our friends and family aren't in those desperate situations because you can't. When you're prepared, you got a big family. Don, I don't know about yours, but you can only store so much food in one house. Yeah. Or, you know, and this so, thing right here yeah. will get you, you know, the society breaks down and you got to go get some friends or some families that y'all got something worked out this baby right here she's ready she'll get you there at night with no lights on yeah right. it's kind of cool it's really hard driving night with cameras though because like you can't you got to watch the screen up on the dash it's like all black and white because it goes into night mode and it's well you can't run 60 mile an hour no yet. about 35 is as fast right. as i can go I'm that's all you want to go road. So, Brad, um, tell me about your YouTube channel and where they can go to get all this in intricate levels of... So, Security All-Star is... Security All-Stars. Our, web, our website and it's our YouTube channel. we got 400 videos. A lot of them are dedicated to ammo, gun, prepping. Most of it's security because we started as a security company 18 years ago. Um, so we're a Christian family-owned business and uh, trying to share some news about how to take care of yourself. I want to turn this around real quick. I just want to say thank you to these two guys. I'm all excited using my selfie stick that Michelle Nichols gave me. Brad. Thanks, Michelle. Right? So, Brad and I have an interesting dynamic. I like to get people healthy, and he likes to keep them safe. Mm. And Don supports Brad in the country area. You, can, you live a ways out here, dude. I, would it took me, I live in Greenbrier, and I'm country. It took me an hour to get here. If my wife wouldn't divorce me, I would live further out.
the solar. We do have electricity, though. That's awesome. We don't have a toilet, though. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. No, I'm kidding. We got it. I did graduate high school in Alaska. A lot of my friends didn't have toilets. In yeah. Alaska, it's not fun. It gets like, you know, 40, 50 below. Mm -hmm. All right, signing off. Uh, thanks, guys. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Appreciate it. Enjoy it. Yeah. Thank you.